Hi everyone, I'm Doc Ken and welcome to the Living in the IT Era chapters 5 and 6 entitled The World Wide Web and Some Ethical Issues. So what are the learning outcomes for this chapters? One is to explain the role of technology in the World Wide Web and how it affects communication. Two, identify the ways to access and connect to the internet. And three, list the current ethical issues in information technology. First, let's talk about the ethical issues in ICT. Just remember the acronym PELS. P stands for plagiarism. E stands for exploitation. L stands for libel. And S stands for software piracy. First ethical issue, plagiarism. Plagiarism is an act of theft. Plagiarism is presenting someone else's work or ideas as your own with or without their consent by incorporating it into your work without full acknowledgement. All published and unpublished material, whether in manuscript, printed, or electronic form is covered under this definition. This simply occurs when a person copies another person's ideas, words, writing, and call it as his or own. Those who committed such action may lead to serious legal and ethical defilements. Next in the list is exploitation. Exploitation is the act of selfishly taking advantage of someone or a group of people in order to profit from them or labor. You are using some information from them to do some necessary acts as a threat. These crimes are happening in every corner of the world and can include any person regardless of age, socioeconomic background, or location. As a result, each case can look very different. As can be gleaned on the figure, these are some of the most commonly reported forms of human trafficking and modern slavery, which is exploitation. Third, libel. Libel in relation to ICT is called cyber libel. It is an inaccurately or injuriously written defamation triggered via electronic means including the internet, social media, email, and websites. Defamation which is written such as on a website. Most online defamation occurs through libel by posting a web page, comment, bulletin board post, review, rating, or blog post. Whether you are the victim of the internet defamation or being wrongfully accused of online defamation, you need to understand the law. In order for a comment, post, or article to constitute internet libel, the first thing you must prove is that the statement constitutes a false statement of the fact. A fact is different than opinion. A fact can be proven true or false. Opinions are typically not actionable as defamation. And lastly, software piracy. Software piracy doesn't require a hacker or skilled coder. Any normal person with a computer can become a software pirate if they don't know about the software laws. With such a widespread impact, it's important to understand what software piracy is and dangers it presents. Software piracy is the act of stealing software that is legally protected. This stealing includes copying, distributing, modifying, or selling the software. Software piracy is defined as illegal copying of software that does not belong to you in a manner that violates the copyright. An example of software piracy is when you download a copy of Microsoft Word from a file sharing website without paying for it. Next, let's now move on to the World Wide Web, which is referred to as a collection of public websites that are connected to the Internet world. In short, WW is composed of different websites such as Facebook and Google. This website is composed of web pages such as home page. If a website were a book, then a web page would be a chapter containing information. There are three fundamental technologies that are said to be part of the World Wide Web development. Number one in the list is Hypertext Markup Language or HTML, which is used to create web pages. 
Second in the list is Hypertext Transfer Protocol or HTTP which is used to interchange information which can be seen on web pages. A good example of this is Facebook. And last, we have web servers and web browsers. A good example of this are Chrome, Firefox, Internet Explorer, and Safari. One of the most popular search engines now is Google. Below is an overview of some of the most useful Google search tricks from basic tips to new features. Number one in the list, use quotes to search for an exact phrase. As you can see on the figure, the more you hate, the more you love. By typing in double quotes on that particular phrase at the start and end, Google will provide you with exact words or phrasing you need. Second, use an asterisk within quotes to specify unknown variables or words. For example, you're not familiar with the more you hate, the more you love quote. So just put an asterisk on it, then Google will provide you word possibilities. And it's also helpful if you're trying to determine a song from its lyrics, but you forgot some of the words, or if you're trying to complete a sentence, but could not remember what it was. Third, use the minus sign to eliminate results containing certain words. For example, in the more you hate, the more you love, you want to eliminate love. Just type the minus sign prior the word love, then the Google will not provide you love anymore. Fourth, search websites for keywords. You can specify certain content format or files you want Google search to provide. For instance, if you want specifically search for PDF files regarding certain topic like climate change, simply type the keyword PDF followed by a colon symbol and the topic such as climate change. Fifth, comparing using versus. By using the versus between two words you want to compare, Google will provide an in-depth analysis of two words such as pointing out similarities and difference. For example, you want to compare and contrast ICT and IT. Just type ICT versus IT. Six, use define to search for the meaning of words. The define keyword provides you a dictionary definition of the word you are trying to search. For example, you want to know the meaning of kin. Just type define colon kin. And lastly, search images using images. Using your mobile device's camera, you can search for image online by going to Google Images. Activating your camera phone and taking a picture of the image you're searching for, Google will provide you with similar image on the web.